Hello and welcome. You are watching Eureka and I am Gohar Raza. Asking questions and seeking answers are as important for some people as breathing is for a common person. And here we have one of the leading technologists and scientists of the country with us today who has throughout his life asked questions and answered them and built the nation. It's a pleasure to have you at Rajya Sabha Television. Thank you. Let me begin by asking you a question that do you remember the hurdles, the problems in getting education when you were a child? Yes, I do remember and uh, I would like to forget but then uh, as a part of life uh, because every time I did not know whether first I was going to a college and uh, then it so happened I ended up in a college at Bellari. Do you remember some teachers in the school? Uh, yes, I remember the first two, two, three years when I didn't join a school, there was a, a, a teacher who had uh, students from of different ages, he was teaching and then he took me and admitted me into the school. And uh, he was a wonderful person. In fact, even just before going to United States after my days, and I just went and met him. He was very old. And he was a marvelous teacher with students in first standard to fourth standard or fifth standard, everybody shouting around. Yet he somehow felt so happy to teach the students. And I'm sure it must have been wonderful because you remember it even after almost eight that's right. years. That's right. Uh, your father always encouraged you to uh, Well, I don't think he really understood education. what I was doing. He just let me do what I liked. <laughs> and, and to that extent, yes. He never came in the way. Uh, and my mother How about was your mother? Hmm? How about your mother? She also my mother, encouraged she was, you? She was very keen that I should study. But again, uh, she, she was an extremely good musician and so on. Uh, she came from a family where her father was a well-known musician in the Udupi temple, actually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, she didn't know anything, but she was very, very conscious of the fact that uh, she must encourage me. They wouldn't have imagined that you will become hmm, no. chairman <laughs> of ISRO. That's right. At some point of That's time right. in life. That's right. Uh, uh, when did you start um, well, doing science? Science as science. Science as science. I Not as a subject. E e even, even in, uh, well, I would say that in intermediate, I, with those days it was called, it used to be called an intermediate, two years after SSLC, I started uh, learning. Really, I started looking at science more actively, with much greater interest, particularly physics. Then in BSc, of course, I took physics because of that, and that was in Anantapur, and then MSc in Benares. When we started our space research program, there were many hurdles, technical, scientific, international relationship, this, that. What gave you and uh, your predecessors confidence that we'll be able to do it? Because your one-liner has been that if anybody can do it in the world, we can do it better. How did you get that confidence? Well, that confidence, I think, came in uh, United States, in a way, because the fact is that uh, when NASA, for example, asked us to do it, and, uh, build the whole thing, we built it, the whole instrument. The whole idea of going from MIT to Dallas was that we'll do it in our own hand. And that's what we did. And uh, then went and had balloon flights, which were really successful. You are credited by your uh, juniors, especially students, and those who worked with you, that you could excite each and everybody who was inducted at any point of time in SRO. Did you take special care or it was part of your it personality? It was part of my, I think, uh, uh, attitude. I knew one thing, that you, if you do, everybody is not excited, you will never be able to do the work. Yes, sometimes you do find it difficult, sometimes you may even have a difficult a, a, a failure, 
uh, but you have to get out of this. And this was, in a way, uh, Dr. Sarabhai's attitude. I think I must say derived some of these things, probably, by looking at him and working with him and uh, so on. Were you always conscious of the fact that Dr. Sarabhai and others and you yourself are taking big challenges. These are really big challenges. These are nothing. Yes. Uh, yes. Something not with, which can be done that, in a jiffy. That is true. And the failures are bound to happen because, in fact, when Dr. Sarabhai, uh, I was about to say that when Professor Bowser had this three four, four balloon flights successively, one after the other failed. And they were, of course, rockets brought from elsewhere. They were sounding rockets. And when they came back, Dr. Sarabhai first talked to Bowser. When did the Armada, Spanish Armada come? And uh, Bowser was, Professor Bowser was uh, worried. Then he said, come on, after 10 minutes, come on, let's see, when will we start the next program? See, the whole attitude was, look, it is a part of the thing. You can't, you can't simply say I will have 100% success. Right. And, and every minutes, failure is a learning uh, point. Every failure is a learning point. And uh, therefore, uh, uh, obviously, when you, and that's the whole idea of uh, the, the, the early So from very small satellites to very large satellites, and you become satellite man of India, and then from very small ASLV to PSLV to now GSLV, you become rocket man. How did you switch over from one to another just because you became... Uh, uh, well, ISRO chairman. I, I remember that when even when I was in US, for many ro the rockets I was involved in. See, the whole idea of going to Dallas was we want to learn everything. Therefore, we had our own, in addition to whatever was uh, done, and uh, uh, then the uh, and in in fact, I knew that we would have failure in ASLV. ASLV, we had two failures. Uh, because the SLV was a very simple rocket. It was no control, no guidance, nothing. It was just a thing which went up. And right. even that had one, one rocket. Correct. And Dr. Kalam was the, the project director for that. And, uh, but the ASLV was the most difficult rocket. Actually, it's far more difficult than any other rocket. Mm -hmm. uh, simply because uh, with the two strap on added, uh, it could launch about 140 kilograms. And so it is, and in that small rocket, we had to put all control guidance and everything because we wanted to keep the cost down. And right. I, all of us knew that a couple of failures may occur, and therefore we wanted to keep the cost down. And we had the first one, unfortunately, failed without even telling the totality of the truth. And they, but it was, I believe, it was the same problem. It's the control and guidance because the entire closed loop guidance control system was put up. And it was very difficult because it's a small rocket to put that. Right. And uh, having done that, PSLV was a much easier system because it's a much bigger rocket. Mm. And uh, the basic problem of any rocket PSLV, is controlling it. Even when, when you started building a BISRO, you started building a PSLV, the cost factor cost was at the back of the cost. mind always because we have developed probably an attitude to do things at much uh, cost effective manner. That is true. And much, much, because we are doing everything here. And anyway, there was no way of getting anything from outside. And we had to build our own. Will you say, a lot of people say that India has done good only in those areas of science where others did not come to help? Well, when others did not come to help, of course, you are forced to do it. Maybe that may be the reason. But, uh, but no, but you had an option like other countries. Don't do it. Well, that's true. But a large hand, number of countries which had money did not do it. Did, did not, not develop it. science right, at all. That's right. But we were sure that this is the only way to build technology. That was something inborn in us. And this was the dream of the nation. Yes. It was not a nation devoid of science and technology. No, no. We thought and dreamt of a nation. Yes, right which will have strong technological right. and scientific And place. everywhere we demonstrated to the country the usefulness of it. For example, even before for the, uh, uh, not only the coconut business, but we built up a ground station at uh, Hyderabad for receiving data from the Landsat. And those were used for actual purposes. 
And we had lots of meetings. It started with Dr. Sarabhai and continued with Professor Dhawan's time. And when we had meetings with forestry, agriculture, everywhere, showing, look, what can be done? So in other words, we built up a large number of people in this process who could use the satellite data and, and use it for actual development of the, the, our natural and resources. And cracking daily problems, day-to-day problem. problems, and also for the seasonal problems. That seasonal problem. And floods, for example. Floods. And uh, cyclones, tornadoes. cyclones, tornadoes. All these things we started demonstrating. And meteorology, again, we took the people, even when, even though first four, uh, the uh, insights were bought from outside, but the design was, basic design was ours. And unfortunately, two failed. Of course, we didn't lose any money because they were all insured. And uh, this is this was the problem with the Ford Aerospace. Even they, uh, it, it was a totally new type of technology where we put everything together with a long sail and boom going out and so on. The first one, the sail and boom didn't go up. In the, so the second one had went, but then the entire system finally would work. But the third one, again, we had a problem. There was a shortage. Fourth one went to, but then our first one, whereas in the remote sensing, we said we'll do it start away, set straight away. So after our effort, we had Bhaskara, just to show again, we can make our own cameras. You can't get these cameras. Right. We made our own camera, one camera and one microwave thing system. And then our cameras are built. Cam and when we... The and better ones. Be better ones. Much in, better than... In fact, uh, the beauty of it was... Uh, in the original thing, it was exactly the same as Landsat. The first IRS one was same as Landsat because we, the, all of our agriculture people, everybody was happy enough with that. That was the resolution was only about 30 meters, 36 meters actually. Then we went to a better thing and then by that time French had put up 10 meters. And CCD technology was introduced in India. In, uh, CCD technology was introduced in, with the with the remote sensing satellites. Right. Not in Arya, but uh, in, not in Bhaskara, but in the Insight. But that uh, was the sorry, first in, in time. IRS. That was the first time in the world that CCD technology was. No, at that time the Landsat also has started, and space the site the, the, the these people the French had started the spot. Right. And but I got so angry, and ever collected everybody. And I said, why are we being told that we are the sixth country, sixth country? I said, I'm tired of hearing. Why can't we be the first country? Then they said, how? I said, if French have put 10 meters, we should put 5 meters. I said, sir, can we do it? I said, we can do it. So we and we did do it. And from 10 meters, with the French were there, we are having 6 meters. So we started selling our thing. Today, 18 countries receive our data, including the first one was United States to receive. And that is in to Norman, take data from us. From ours. Norman, Oklahoma, I went and inaugurated it. When Siddharth Shankarre was, he also was there, he was the ambassador. In fact... So there are many firsts as far right. as ISRO is concerned. Yeah. To and its today credit. we get uh, quite a number of, uh, enormous amount of money from, uh, from these people. Very. Right. And, and in, it's in been fact, earning, yeah, earning in, in fact, Rajiv, Rajiv Gandhi said, I worked with five prime ministers. And Mrs. Gandhi, Raju Gandhi, and VP Singh, and then last was Narasim Rao, and Vizral, and uh, Chandrasekhar, and so on. And Raju Gandhi said, why are you so keen to put in the United States? And that was the first, first station. I said, if I put in some smaller place, everybody will say, okay. Now, if I put in the United States, now you'll say, okay, he must be somewhere good. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. See, this shift from... And, and they advertise very well. The country which gave Taj Mahal to the world has given the wonderful remote sensing satellite, they said. That's how they advertise in, 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 in uh, USA. We are going to be a GSLV uh, sat, yeah. uh, launch vehicle country yeah. very soon yeah. and demonstrate to the world that we can... It must be much more than that. Even the GSLV which is there is already, it has been tested. Uh, but we need a far bigger one. And then it depends upon country has to take a very, very important decision. Are we going to go into manned flights? If we are going to go into manned flights... I was coming to that. If the country takes a decision, is ISRO ready to 
take the plunge. I have no doubt about it. I have absolutely no doubt about it because the the capability was, in fact, in a way, our ASLV was our turning point. The first PSLV itself, even though it was considered a failure, it was not really a failure. See, it was a small hitch in the computer, which instead of telling, asking the the four stage to go up, instead asked the four stage to go down. There was a overflow, and that was a <laughs> that was a nothing could be done. So it was a definite and, instruction exactly, given by the. But exactly as the instructions given, it went. See, therefore, we knew precisely well. Because so for a I, scientist, it was a success. So for a scientist, it was a full success. Because for a common person, maybe it was a failure. That's right. But for scientists, it was it, a success just because it followed the correct absolutely. instruction. It said, look, computer tells me yeah, you have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I, so every every stage it went down. And and the most difficult portion is the, the lower atmosphere. And everything went beautifully. Uh, we learned all our lesson of technology in, in ASLV. And that was uh, so because they, we just broke. If the nation gives mandate to ISRO that now we want to launch human being into space like yes. other countries. We are ready. Yes, well, we... will take time. It will take time. It will take, take time. We uh, but I, I, I personally think that uh, uh, I wouldn't... Uh, we will have to do some work. Uh, I don't like the purely cryogenic. I, it is, you see, uh, if it is a, not a human, I mean, with the, not for transporting human beings, then it's different. I mean, there may be a once in a while failure. Fortunately, we, we have had no, except for the first one, and the, uh, there are no failures in PSLV. It's been one of the finest. Uh, the, uh, but you can have problem because cryogenic is always, particularly liquid hydrogen, is a bit difficult thing. So human beings, when we go, we go to semi-cryogenic. And people, we have... Will you still argue for semi-cryogenic? I, I will argue for semi-cryogenic. We have started the work on that. Right. And the last, the, just the liquid, the, the, we can have the liquid nitrogen. There is no problem. Much easier to handle. Liquid hydrogen is always a great problem. And uh, liquid nitrogen and probably the kerosene or whatever it is, the type of the, the thing we can use. There, there are work going on. See, some amount of work is always going on in this row, in, in the name of development. Right. In fact, when we did Aryabhat, uh, we, and we had already st started the control systems of the Bhaskara. When we did the Bhaskara, we did for the Apple, three, because that was a three-axis stability system. Right. And so, and, uh, and in, the in fact, we had the control engineer, who was an extremely good engineer. He said, sir, I have no work. I said, do for the Bhaskara. He said, Bhaskara is not uh, approved, sir. I said, we'll get it approved. Get moving. <laughs> See, that is what that, uh, a leader is that's right. uh, and expected to do. Because you have to, you have, therefore, development is something which has to be done. And, and for even, that, even you have to be abreast with latest in the field. Absolutely. And there are many other ideas, even though the ideas, I am not sure whether they will come to fruition, they call the completely the air breathing systems. Right. But the work has been, some work has been going on, even with us, whether the whole idea that is that, you, you see, if you want to make the, one of the major things we have is, you have to reduce the cost of transportation. Cost of transportation is very high. Now everybody says, how come? It's very simple. If you had aeroplanes, where simply take the people off, and then once in a while go off, they, they will never be able to run. They come back, half an hour later they get defueled and again go up. The second thing is they carry almost 50% of the aeroplane's weight as people and their luggages. Now our problem is all these rockets carry only about 3% are at best three and a half percent. Correct. So therefore, we have a problem. In terms of 50 percent, we are only carrying three and a half percent. Second, it goes up and then gone. And you and therefore, if we can get a rocket and even shuttle, it took six months to seven months to get it refurbished because the the, 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 the all the tiles had to be changed and so on, right. and send it back. And again, the first stage goes down into the sea. So. 
the only way to bring down the cost is by making it a repeatable a reusable. system reusable and very quickly and and also reduce the weight now the only way to reduce the weight is that you don't carry oxidizer you carry only fuel so that you can carry the you know in fact it goes up and takes the oxygen from the thing makes it liquid and puts that and then it goes off and now there are work going on is not easy is a very very difficult task and uh, but you are hopeful that it'll uh, the problem will be cracked some some system will come which we have to in, in, improve the quality of the cost of time i'll have to take a break at the moment but the discussion will continue welcome back to eureka i wanted to ask you our experience with both united states and uh, uh, ussr at that time was friendly as well as competitive it and, was and friendly it was not competitive i wouldn't say competitive competition came later it was friendly and we got all these rockets but we ran into problems we at that time we didn't get we we had free rockets these were given right and the french in fact even uh gave the something for the centaur which are again rockets uh, then of course it was clear we must mass satellite program we must start our own rocket program and not only sounding rockets but bigger rockets for launching satellites so the space science technology center was formed within a couple of years after tumba and uh, started a larger program of dr sarabai and then he wanted me to start the satellite program so i he said that you write a whole uh, thesis on how satellites have to be used how they can be used and so on. so i wrote a sort of a thesis in took two months and uh, then gave it to him and he said i like the thesis wonderful it is but one thing i don't like i said what you what 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 is it which you don't like he said he have said who is going to do it i said vikram that is your problem to find somebody who is going to do it you wanted me to write the thesis i wrote the thesis for you and he said no you have to accept it for one year i didn't want to i said i was going as a visiting professor because my pioneer series were going on and but you did it at the end of one year he he was my professor therefore there was nothing i could do to stop it he was such a persuasive man and finally i said okay and we started with a small group we had some 20 people in trivandrum and i had my own party people here in in uh, in ahmedabad about completely people. untrained completely they didn't know anything nothing, about satellites not, nothing about satellites and uh, then uh, i said all right okay uh, we said we'll build a 100 kg sa- satellite in bangalore in uh, in uh, we are not sure of that bangalore was not in the picture at that time and for that when we did had, it we come had to have picture? a launch and when was, did you have uh, uh, bangalore that in was after sarabai's death after sarabai's yeah. death and we we thought we will use scout rocket because scout rocket had become same as the first x-ray astronomy rocket right. which was launched from kenya <laughs> and it is an american rocket it is not a big rocket but it's a small rocket could launch about 100 120 kg and uh, then dar who was our ambassador in in russia he wrote a letter to mrs gandhi saying look the russians are willing to assist you and so on you are not going to russia you are only going to us and he said professor rao seems to have been sent to us for finding out about the so dr sarabai called and we had a meeting at uh, delhi with the russian ambassador right. within within 8 days after that Mrs Gandhi said that very lady. short notice very, you very are short notice to US only Mr Velody was there myself and Dr Sarabhai and Ambassador Pigao and I was asked to present for 15 minutes I presented look this is what we want to do we first build a first satellite experimental satellite so that we learn satellite technology and then we'll talk of obviously where to go in for the Uh, communication and Russians so were not very comfortable that you will be able to build apple they were uh, apple very it was ex- aribata and uh, but ambassador peak of said after hearing that what's the weight of your satellite i said we are doing it for 100 kg satellite therefore maybe one experiment we will put he said no 
US must be heavier than the first Chinese satellite. And uh, Chinese, I said Chinese satellite was about 180 kilograms. He said, US must be heavier. I said, that is, that is easier than doing a lighter satellite. Correct. And within another two months, I, I asked again Dr. Sarabhai, I said, you go and you and were given 36 uh, 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 months to complete it. But that is in uh, the, the big decision started at, uh, with the academy. Uh, I do not want to end the conversation, but in the end, every beautiful thing should come to an end. And in the end, I would like to ask you if you have a message for the younger generation. Would you like to give one? Well, I would like to give one thing is that uh, I go back to my own uh, upbringing. I saw a train first time when I was in intermediate. I was in the train because no trains used to come to Udupi. They used to come to Mangalore, but Mangalore is only 36 miles from Udupi. Udupi was a taluk at that time. But there are four rivers, and at each river you have to cross, and you have to take a boat, and then take another bus. So it was a big affair, going to Mangalore from Udupi. And first time I saw a train was in Bellary when I went for intermediate. But then slowly started dreaming, so what I could say is that, uh, I, I know that, for example, when I was in MSC, even in Benares, if I had said I want to do space, I am not even sure whether my own professors would have uh, uh, welcomed it very easily, because at that time space was not heard of. But dare to dream, I think, is the one main thing is you must dream, and uh, you, then you have to just dedicate yourself for that. And that is the most... Dream a dream which is difficult right. and then work for it, and then the work that is the mantra the, absolutely. to become That's a real good citizen That's of right. planet That's Earth. Right. May I on your behalf promise our viewers that you will be happy to answer questions if they have? Yes, of course. Okay, so you have a promise from one of the most outstanding scientists of the country that any query that you have would be answered too. Write to us at eurekarstv at gmail.com. We'll come back next week once again with an outstanding scientist. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. It has been fascinating Thank talking to you. Thank you.